Okay. Good morning, everybody, and welcome. Um, this is the final session of the, the FAM week, and it's the press conference. Um, and we have with us today the Honourable Gov Governor, uh, Honourable Premier, and Mr. Adam Pyle from the FCO. Um, I'm going to pass over in a minute to the Governor, who's going to give some short remarks. Um, and then we'll have remarks on both the Premier and, and Mr. Pyle. And then we'll have a short uh, Q&A session. Uh, I'd just like to say on behalf of the Ministry of Finance, it's been an extraordinary week. Um, it's a very busy week, the FAM, and this was no different to previous FAMs. Um, but I'm encouraged to say it's been very well attended. And I'd just like to thank the, the Premier and the Ministers for attending most of the sessions during the week. Uh, I'd like to give a special thanks to MCRS for allowing us to use their their rooms and um, looking after us with plenty of tea and biscuits throughout the week. Um, and finally, it'd be amiss for me to say thank you very much to the Ministry of Finance staff who, who have done exceptional work. Um, and so thank you especially to Maria and Lauren. So thank you very much. Over to you, Governor. Thank you very much, uh, FS. And thanks, uh, ladies and gents of the press, uh, for coming along tonight to the, to the press conference. Um, it seems quite a long time ago that we were having our meeting on Monday, o opening the, the FAM week. Um, but it's been a very full week, an excellent week. Uh, at that uh, opening session, I just gave a couple of thoughts that key to a successful FAM in my uh, relatively brief experience here was, uh, firstly, professional uh, diligence and thoroughness attention to detail, and secondly, uh, conducting things in a spirit of cooperation and, and friendship. And um, I must say, from my own experience in this week, I think both have been absolutely hit on the nail. So I would very strongly echo the FS's uh, uh, observations just now, and a real thank you to the whole Government of Montserrat public service team in all its parts. Really excellent preparation big challenge coming straight after Christmas and with busy day jobs already. Thank you very much indeed for doing it all so carefully and in such a, a happy uh, spirit indeed. It's built a really solid understanding uh, between us all and um, an excellent spirit of cooperation and friendship. So thank you very much. I shall hand over to the folks who are going to say a bit more on the, on the substance of it. But as I say, thank you very much indeed. Thank you, FS. Thank you, um, H. E. I want to join with the others who um, have extended words of thanks to the many persons who were involved in this week of activities. In particular, I want to thank the core teams of both DFID and the government of Montserrat, the Ministry of Finance, and all others who took part in the discussion. Truly, it was a very fruitful experience for us as a new, as a new government. Uh, my ministers and I certainly um, enjoy the exposure that we have had. It's new to us, but we have learned a lot. We have attended, as you've heard, um, most of the sessions. And the only reason why we did that is because we want to be familiar with how it works and the pressure that the public servants are under when dealing with defeat. Just a smile. <laughs> um, surely, it, um, we, have, we, have, we have had a very good week of, of working together, both DFID and um, FCO and, uh, and local government, um, in thrashing out the issues that are there to help us go through the, the, the new budget cycle. You may ask me what were our expectations as a government when we came into talks. Certainly, we had no great expectations because we knew that the talks were about finalizing this round of talks for the recurrent budget for 2020-21. So we didn't come in with any, any, any expectations except that we wanted to ensure that we had monies to spend in terms of recurrent for services and, and salaries. And then um, we also spoke about um, you know, some of the issues that is a separate program. The government, my government, we had some concerns about certain management aspects of it. And um, in one of this, we had a steering committee meeting, and we actually got some clarification on some of the concerns that we had. So um, all in all, the, the, the week went very fast, but very good for all of us. And I can assure you that um, we are moving. We have had some new ideas that we have shared with DFID and FCO. And as time goes by, we'll be expounding on them and letting the press and, and, and people of Montreal know exactly what those are. Because, you know, my interest is uh, my focus, really, and my government's focus on private sector development and expansion. And we had some discussion on that as well. And as time goes by, we will develop those issues. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Premier. Um, and on behalf of the UK government, I'd like to say that we've had a really productive uh, week with some really constructive discussions. 
And <clears throat> we've met a huge range of people. We've spent a lot of time with the government, but we've also been out there talking to NGOs and talking to businesses. But I'd like to thank the Premier and his ministers and the Public Service of Montserrat for the warm welcome they've given us and uh, all the hard work that's gone into it. So not only in intense meetings throughout the week, but there's a lot of paperwork and thought that's gone into making this week a success. And um, for us, it's been good to build that relationship with the Premier and his team. And the Premier has been very clear about what he, his government's priorities are for Montserrat going forward, which is really useful for us. And I think we've established a good working relationship moving forward from here. And it feels like even in just in this short week, as the Premier says, we've made some really good progress on some of the important key issues. Um, uh, both the Governor and the Premier mentioned the public service in Montserrat. And uh, we've had some really good discussions with some really dedicated and knowledgeable uh, public servants here. Um, we've seen some really good works, reforms. We've seen uh, areas like child safeguarding and vulnerable adults where there's a a real will to come together as a community and support those people, so it's, that, that should be applauded. Um, I'd just like to reassure you, because we've also we've been talking to different parts of the Montserrat government asking some quite difficult questions, but I can reassure you, they're difficult questions we would ask to officials in London, in Scotland, in Anguilla, in the Cayman Islands, and uh, I think it's really about us as public servants sort of thinking about how we can <coughs> do our jobs differently. And even in the UK government, whenever I ask a colleague something, the answer is usually, well, we've always done it that way. And so it's not unique to uh, any one particular public service. And I think as a public servant throughout the world, we need to think about how we can reduce bureaucracy to speed up investment, as I know the Premier is very keen to do, um, how we can join up public services, so make sure that we're focusing on the service we deliver to the people of Montserrat, but how we're ready for the challenges and opportunities that we, uh, the UK <coughs> government and the Mon government of Montserrat are going to face in the next decade that we just entered. Um, moving forward from here, DFID colleagues um, have got a lot to take away with them. We'll work with them back in the UK. And I think the purpose of this week is really trying to get an understanding of the challenges people are facing in Montserrat, and the opportunities coming around the corner, and for us to make the best case to UK ministers to, for continued support for Montserrat. And I can reassure you that the UK is here <coughs> for the long haul. We understand we have uh, some very serious responsibilities in Montserrat, and we take those very seriously as a UK overseas territory uh, populated by British nationals. Um, even this week, I'd like to say that we've made some good progress. I think um, it's good to see the cable survey ship off the coast. So that, that's some, something that's going to arrive very soon, hopefully. And on the £30 million capital investment programme, we've, as the Premier said, we've made some good progress and there's some really good discussions going on uh, around things which are really important to um, Montserratians in their day-to-day -day life, like um, getting the runway sorted, moving forward with the port project. And we uh, fully support what the Premier and his government have said about economic growth and attracting private investment to Montserrat. Um, whilst we have talked about the UK team, the Foreign Office team, the DFID team, actually it feels like we've been Team Montserrat this week. Mm -hmm. And I think our number one aim is to support the people of Montserrat. And I just want to finish uh, with some bad news and a confession. <coughs> so the bad news is that uh, yesterday I drank from the runaway gat, so I'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> and a confession that um, I actually a flight, this is my first trip to Montserrat, and I, um, I think echo the team's uh, sentiments, but I think I've slightly fallen in love with Montserrat. Mm -hmm. So uh, thank you very much for the warm welcome you've given us and all the hard work. Yeah. Yes, good morning. Uh, firstly, um, thanks for um, affording us this opportunity to talk to you following the, um, the, f the farm meetings. Um, but your name, I didn't get your name. And Adam Pyle. Adam, Adam Pyle? Yeah, P-I-L-E. Mm, Adam Pyle. Uh, not Paul. <laughs> no. <laughs> and you're from which? Uh, so I am the Deputy Director in the Foreign Office responsible for the UK's inhabited overseas territories. <laughs> <laughs> so so my, first, my first to understand things a little yeah. different. This is probably the first time that the so I did notice that the Governor, um, surprisingly, was leading the um, introductions and so on. Mm. Uh, this is the first time that we're having FCO involvement in a, a different concentrated matter yeah. with Montserrat, yeah. you've come a long way. Yeah. So can you <laughs> tell us a little bit, and um, before we get into all the other things, 
this also brings me to the question. We know that um, we've got a, you've got a new leadership in, in, in the UK. Yeah. Um, and who had announced from before that things will be different, particularly between FCO and the DFID. And what I want to know is, how, is this a sign as to how we expect to go forward? in the relationship between DFID, FCO, <coughs> and the territories? Yeah, it's a good question. And it's not, uh, just to give you a wider context, it's not actually something that's just related to DFID and FCO. Actually, I think uh, the new civil service leadership in, not the political, but the civil service leadership in the UK are trying to get us to work across the silos in different departments. And if I'm honest, we haven't been doing a very good job working across those silos. And as I was saying earlier, um, the average person in the street doesn't care which government department delivers their services. They just want good public services and good value for money. Um, <clears throat> I think the Foreign Office and DFID could have worked better together in previous years, and that's why we're here together as a team working for Montserrat. So it's really important for us to work across those silos and um, just deliver a good product for Montserrat. And with that background, what can we expect I'm so sorry. <laughs> what can we expect um, with the, we know Brexit brings differences yep. and brings changes. Yep. Um, what can you tell us in terms of how that might affect your relationship with us? Or what can we expect yep. that Brexit, will it have any um, bad news, good news for Montreal? Yeah. Uh, so I think it's clear with the election in the UK, Brexit is happening. Yes. Um, we have no uh, choice other than make a success of it. So, so we can't just sit on our hands. And for me, I think if you listen to a lot of politicians in the UK, they talk about uh, still staying close to Europe and that an important relation, but they still talk about looking beyond the borders of Europe. And I think uh, the overseas territories and the relationship between the UK and the overseas territories can only become stronger in that fact. And I think the trials and tribulations um, of things like climate change and uh, international trade that Montserrat's facing are the ones that the UK is going to face more and more and more, and we need to work together. Thank you very much. Um, you did say that you came with, uh, you had some, uh, I think you repeated some of the things you said in your opening yeah. statement. I had just caught that bit yeah. since I was late for that, for that meeting. Um, you talked about the challenges, yeah. and uh, you talked about, well, the governor for sure talked about the meetings taking place in good spirit of cooperation and friendship. Now, I, I'm going to ask you, with the challenges, yeah. um, and I will expect the Premier will also comment, I would hope the Premier would also comment on this, with the challenges how, how and the cooperation. Yeah. Friendship doesn't really answer challenges. So yeah. how, how, how have we progressed on that? How so did you progress on that? Yeah, so, so two things. So one of the challenges, what I actually meant by challenges is the challenges facing Montserrat, not the relationship. And um, you know, I faced, uh, my colleagues and I faced difficulties getting here in the first place. The ferry was cancelled, the flights were cancelled. So you see how much the flights and the ferries cost, you see how much that's a difficulty for Montserratians. Um, and I think that's not only something that's unique to Montserrat, it's, it's a problem facing small island developing states around the world. And talking to lots of the public servants who are re really dedicated and really interested in their job, and it's, uh, it's a problem retaining staff, retaining talent in small island communities. And if, if I'm honest, it's a problem you see in the UK. There's a, there's a brain drain to London in, in some remote rural communities. Mm -hmm. But at your point about the relationship with the government to Montserrat, um, I think the relationship with the overseas territories has evolved over the years uh, from a colonial relationship to more of a partnership and I think that we've come into this uh, respecting the new government that they've got a, an, an agenda they want to deliver and they want to look at things afresh and we've been very uh, upfront that certain things were a decision for the government of Montserrat. There is an envelope of funding that the UK government provides but on the, the capital investment program, we had some really good discussions with the cabinet about uh, the government of Montserrat's uh, prioritization of those projects and what the project should be. And it's really important that those decisions are taken in Montserrat. And it's important that we are part of the decision and will help provide the funding and support. But the, the people of Montserrat, the government of Montserrat, need to decide what's right. <coughs>
four months run. One of the problems that people have <coughs> had and still hear about today is the um, decisions must be taken by months run, four months mm -hmm. run. But then they talked about, uh, somebody alluded a little bit to the public servants working with DFID and the pressures they face. Yeah. What are these pressures? And I mean, um, I can go back uh, six years. For 12, now it's eight years actually. Mm -hmm. 2012, now it's eight years. Where um, these very things, the pressures and so on, uh, it was Alan Duncan who had promised to Premier Ruben Mead at the time that these difficulties will work to yeah. um, get them out of the way. Yeah. Your Excellency has come to Montserrat and he keeps talking about the processes and the blocks and the so on and so on and so on. Was that, was there, there any con, uh, discussion as to how we were really going to, and the Premier in yeah. his opening remarks referred to that as well. Yeah. As, as how have we progressed there? So I think we've progressed a lot and we've had lots of uh, frank and honest discussions and we've made a lot of progress bashing through a lot of issues. I think what, why it's a challenge for the public service in Montserrat is they have a day-to-day -day job, which is busy at the best of times, and uh, there's a huge amount of paperwork and meet uh, schedules and meetings that's preceded this. There's a lot of work for them. And if, if I'm really honest, we have some very stringent financial controls in the UK. And the whole point of the financial aid mission is uh, getting the government of Montserrat to help us make the case to UK ministers as to why continued funding needs to help Montserrat. Mm -hmm. so, okay. Um, yeah. But we're, we're very mindful of how much of a ask that is for the public service in Montserrat. Good morning. Um, James White from Radio Montserrat. I'm just trying to, to move a little away from the sort of generalities. And um, just to be a little bit more specific in, in terms of um, the week of discussions. Yeah. And um, Honorable Premier, I want to start with you. Um, in, in terms of the week and the, the discussions for this particular budget cycle, um, what are some of the, the areas that, that stood out for you, um, taking into consideration what your government is, is trying to do? Thank you, James White. That's a good question. Um, Basically, my government have an agenda, and we shared it with DFID and FCO, exactly the path that we want to take. And um, we have had discussions, for instance, on the, the separate program, because um, we wanted to ensure that every, any bottlenecks that went in, in the way to prevent the speedy implementation of that project would be removed. And I made no hesitation in saying to, I said to the team that we must move we must make every effort to remove every bottleneck that is in the way to prevent the project from going forward, project from going forward. and I think we all agreed on that. I expect from DFID and FCO a, a partnership, a real partnership. And, and Mr. Rose sp spoke about um, decision making. And it is clear, and I've made it clear, that my government and I will make decisions. Um, DFID will talk and we will talk to everybody because when it's a partnership. But in the final analysis, we will have to make decisions and judging from the implication that we'll have on our population. Not necessarily because we have to make it, but we have to also um, weigh the, 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 the decision that we're going to take and how much it's going to affect and in what way it's going to affect the population of Montserrat. So yes, we had some good discussions on, on, on the separate program. We had discussions on the port project, for instance, because that is critical for, for our tourism and for merchant shipping and our tourism. So we actually had discussion that, and um, while we did not go into, 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 into detail we, we, we spoke around it because the possibility might exist. We may have to speak to David about some additional funding, but we agreed that in the interim, we will go forward and see where we are and determine how best to move forward. So um, basically, we went through, and I think that I am comfortable, and my minister is comfortable that we have started a process in which together, and, and if you go back to our, our theme during the campaign, together we can, and we take that theme right through that us, DFID and FCO and the people of Montserrat will be able to make it. Um, yes, we need some assistance, but we will also make effort to go beyond, and I, I for, for want to repeat myself, to go beyond the boundaries of aid and to make Montserrat more sustainable. Mm. Thank you very much, Honorable Premier, for your, your response. And 
You know, the premise on which I, I ask this question is um, the fact that we've, in, in years gone by, we've had um, the delay in budget presentations and so on. I, I want to ask um, Adam, um, hope I have the name yeah. right, Adam. Yeah. Yes, um, I, I know that, you know, a decision will not be made here. Yeah. You know, but in, in terms of ensuring that we have our budget presentation on, yeah. on time, what will you be doing to facilitate this? Yeah. So it's interesting you asked that point. So we had a discussion in this room this morning about the timing of this and how it can work better with the, the processes in Montserrat. And if there is something that works better for the government of Montserrat and uh, going through LegCo, we're happy to work with you on that one. Thank you. Uh, <coughs> Nerissa Golden, Discover Montserrat. Premier, you mentioned that you and your ministers were um, attending most of the sessions. Knowing that the technicians usually lead on the, the meetings uh, with DFID, how were you, how were the, the plans in terms of the manifesto that you have? How much of that do you think is really translated into the current bu recurrent budget that was presented? That's a good question there, sir. It's, it's going to be difficult to, to implement in the first year of our tenure um, major changes to the budget cycle or the, in, the, the, the contents of the budget. Um, there are some ministries that will be able to, to, to um, manipulate this, the lines within the budget to ensure that some of our, our, our plans are in it. As a matter of fact, our social agenda, for instance, social services will be fine having reviewed the, the draft budget figures, realize that some of the things that we're talking about is in fact already ingrained in the budget. So um, some of those things can be taken on board immediately. But for the next budget cycle, where we'll have more control over the budget and its, in, and its, and its, and its, in, and its contents, we'll be able to push our agenda items through it. So um, major changes to the budget line, you know, major activities of our, of our, of our um, manifesto, not major, major, but yes, some things from our manifesto is in green in the, in the budget, and we'll work with those. And as we go along, we'll see how best we can um, add, 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 other things, add other things to it. Okay, thank you. You mentioned that you had discussions about the CIPREC and the possibility you might want to make some changes. Uh, anything that you could tell us about what maybe some of those changes in priorities based on what was originally um, planned out? Sorry, I'm not sure I said we want to make changes. Adjustments? What, what we did is to prioritize. Okay. We have to be clear as to the priority of those projects if you're going to get them off. Okay. And so what we did with David and FCU is say, these are our number one, number two, and number three. And what else, what, whatever is left, we will deal with them. So we are very clear as to which project we want to um, take on and in what order. As a matter of fact, as I said to them, there's no reason why those projects cannot be, work, cannot be implemented simultaneously. Mm, yeah. So as we go along, we will see how best we can work on all the, pro all the, all the strands of the, pro of, the, of, the, of the program to ensure that within three years, we have spent all the money, and then we go back to defeat. Mm -hmm. That's our aim. Okay, uh, so could, first, could you tell me what those three priorities are for you? Clearly, hospital project, hospital is number one. Mm -hmm. and, and until we know exactly the cost, and I, I've said that already, so it's no secret, until we know the cost, what the hospital is going to cost us, we can't go beyond that. Mm -hmm. So hospital is number one. And once we know the cost of the hospital, then we move on to the runway. Because it's absolutely critical that the runway is resurfaced. We cannot continue to close the airport when it went rain. So that is number two. And uh, MSS blocks l and We have to create an environment for learning in our, in our schools. And so these are the three. Then we have the A1 World Project, which links into the, um, to the fiber optic. And that it will come on. So you can, we can also have three and four working together or two, three, and four. But the hospital, yeah, we must be clear what it's costing us and how we're going to do it. And once that is out of the way, we will move forward. So that's our, that's our number one, two, and three, okay. as far as our government is concerned. And David is aware that these are our priorities. Right. Could you just clarify for me, and FS, if you need to step in here, that's fine. Um, was there a specific allocation in terms of it's a, it's a $30 million project? Did we have to say only we could only spend $5 million in the first year in tranches? Or is it that all of the money is accessible as long as we have a program to deliver? How does it work? I, mean, <coughs> I differ to colleagues to tell me if I get this wrong, but it's a £30 million capital program over five years. Right. That's a so there isn't an allocation each year, but it's, it's, it's a total pot of money. Okay. So. Thank you. And as I said, we expect to spend it within three years. <laughs> 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 
Okay, Governor, you mentioned at the opening uh, your concern about the cultural center. Did that mm -hmm. come up in any of the discussions? And uh, we know part of the challenge with that is that the center actually doesn't, while it is for the people of Montserrat, it is not controlled by the people of Montserrat. Um, how are we moving along in trying to really get a definitive on, on handing it back over in terms of even legally? To, to Montserrat, whether it's the government of Montserrat or an organization, and funding the center and, and its future? Oh, thank you, Nerissa. Those are good, good questions. I mean, as far as the cultural center is concerned, I think it forms part of a, a whole package of maintenance challenges. And I understand from if it and Governor Montserrat colleagues that the plan is to look at those in more detail separately. They have been aired. There was a good quite tough and frank discussion about the extent of the maintenance challenges. And so those are going to be considered. Uh, no decisions been reached uh, yet on, on the exact mechanism, but those are going to be looked at and the cultural center is right there in the mix. I mean, you, you, you say it's sort of not really owned in quotes by the uh, Montserrat people, but my understanding is that the Montserrat Foundation and particularly the, the Martin family really wanted this to be exactly that, actually owned by the people of Montserrat. And that's really Judy, Lady, Lady Martin's key wish is for Montserrat to benefit from it and enjoy it. Um, and that's, uh, so it is there, the, the exact sort of mechanism of ownership is unclear. My personal view is that what we have so at the moment is too complex. I'm a great believer in simplicity and I find it too complex. I would personally like to see it simply transferred to the government estate books with a sort of supporting commitment that meets the Martin family and the Montserrat Foundation's desire that it should be maintained as a, as a, as a, as a, a gift of friendship. I would like to see something simple like that than, rather than the complex proposals of uh, golden chairs and issues of that sort. That's a personal view. But the, the key point is that it's recognized as something that needs to be addressed and it's in the mix as part of a portfolio of maintenance challenges. But uh, colleagues, FS, and uh, different colleagues, if you wanted to add anything on that, because I haven't seen the absolute detail of the discussions, but that's my understanding of the picture, Nerissa, there. Is that right, Colin? Yes, that, that, that's exactly right. The, the maintenance issue is a, uh, a tough discussion, uh, very, very frank one, um, and certainly um, all maintenance issues across government and the Gulf Center uh, are part of that remit. And if, if I may just add a small point. Um, coincidentally, I met with Lady Martin two days ago, and she's very concerned about the condition. Um, what she's saying to me is that it belongs to Montserrat. We must, we have, we must own it, but at the same time, the repeat has to be done. Yeah. Um, could you just clarify for us the figure that it's going to take um, Based on the, the, I know there's been an assessment done. What is that figure as to how much it's going to cost to repair the centre? Um, well, the, just uh, my own understanding is that the uh, technicians, um, alpha technicians from Trinidad, came and gave a review of all the government estate, including the cultural centre. They did come up with, I think it's quite a large figure. <laughs> uh, uh, FS may FS may have a clearer view, but my recollection is it's in the order of 1.2 to 1.4 million EC for the cultural centre. Um, and I think, without meaning any disrespect to anyone, I think that particular set of recommendations needs some grounding uh, uh, out and some checking and calibration of it. It's, uh, for one thing, a question of whether you include all sorts of seismic protections and issues of that sort, or whether you do a, a sort of more, more basic set of repairs to make something fully hurricane resilient. I'm not an expert, but that was the sort of ballpark figure. I think there is a suggestion that our own public works people feel uh, repairs could be done to a good standard for rather less than that. FS, is that your understanding? Yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah. I'd just say, you know, cost estimate would have to be done and updated as we go forward. Yeah. But certainly the report was very clear on the costs. Dwight Sampson from DS Media. Premier, I wanted to ask a question. I know that you briefly mentioned it in your in your um, presentation, but, and Dr. Sammy in his, um, in his weekly podcast. Um, where are we with the port project? I know, has it come up any time during the week? What, what is the, the decision related to the 
to the port project. I know that you spoke to the runway and the resurfacing of the runway, but unless we address the port project, then whenever it rains, basically we are locked down if the sea becomes rough. Thank you, Dwight. We, have, we understand that the port project is not really part of the separate program. It's separate part. It's a UKCF um, EU funded project. And um, I will give more detail on it in a couple of weeks' time when I meet with press again. But um, so far as to say that um, the field is aware that we may have some constraints and that we may have to approach them. But until then, um, we are working through. It's not going to be self. It's going to be completed by my administration. We have no plans to shut it down because it's in our best interest to ensure that the report is completed. So we will do that. Um, it's going to be going out. I think there's a, the, it's, it's, it's as a going out or gone out. You know, it's managed by CDP, by CDB. And expression of interest would be around, would, would be out so that um, we can know exactly where we are on it. And we will give you more details in, in a couple of weeks' time when I meet with you again. Just, just issue. Mm -hmm. okay. The expression of interest just issued. In sorry, sorry. The expression of interest is just issued. In right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's right. So um, in a couple, of, in a couple of weeks' time, we should have an idea. Oh, you know what I mean? Whether we have a ten, whether we have bidder, whether somebody's going to fit, or whether we can fit within the within the financial framework that we have, or we have to fix seek more funding. That's where we are right now. But we will we will give you more detail as we as we go along. And 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 Mr. Premier, it seems as if you you preempted my um, next question. Um, as far as new spends are concerned, um, were there any discussions? I would want to believe, and I would like to hear from you and of course from Adam as well. Well, of course, and um, Adam would tell you that we asked for an open check, which he wouldn't give us. <laughs> um, <laughs> but of course, um, you spend this part of a negotiation in any, 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 um, any, um, any farm, farm um, discussion, new spend usually come up. And of course, we have some new spends. Um, there's no final um, decision on them as yet. Um, I think Cabinet will have to make a final prioritization of those, um, those um, entries and then if it will tell us. We hope that we have them before the end of January so we can put in our budget. But yes, um, we have um, new spent actually took a little time in the talking because this additional funding outside and above the, 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 the standard um, um, aid grant that we're getting. So um, we have to convince DFID and um, the FS have to convince me and I have convinced DFID that these are figures that we need to um, in in include. Um, let me just say here, um, we spoke at length on the, the explosion of pension, pension and, um, and gratuities, pension gratuities and um, uh, increments. That's taking some time. And uh, of course, there's a huge um, increase in terms of new spent for income, for um, pensions. And um, the other aspect that is we have to get money for also is the um, in health, Medivac and um, referrals overseas. Those budgets have exploded over, over the past year. So um, these are two areas that are, we need significant amount of something for that in new spent. And I'm sure that if will not tell us no on these two, but we we, we will wait and see. Uh, okay, Adam. No pressure yeah. there, Adam. No. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so just give me your, your own um, take on the new spends and, yeah. and how do you? So I'm not going to go into detail on in specific new spends, but I would say yeah, we recognise that things don't stay static and priorities change. So uh, that's the whole point of the financial aid mission this week is to work for all of those uh, bits of new spend. And uh, one thing I would like to do is pay tribute to the government of Montserrat, the work they've done to improve their financial management. And I think there's some really serious good work going on within the public service here, to, as the Premier says, to prioritise those bits and work through them. And um, you know, uh, as a sub -pub uh, public servant, I would love it if I could spend money on everything I had. <laughs> yeah, uh, in time. But um, we all know from managing a household budget, you can't do that. And it's interesting that, as the Premier mentioned, one of the, the things uh, cropping up here is the pension liability, and uh, that's that's not a, just a pressure that Montserrat's facing. Yeah, there's an aging population all over the world, and it's something we've all collectively got to look at and how we balance uh, supporting the elderly versus funding schools, hospitals. So it's, it's something that Montserrat and the rest of the world are struggling with. Uh, can I just say, we, we're hitting 12, so if we can have one or two, maybe just another five minutes, because I know that everyone's got flights and stuff to, to catch. The final question for me. Um, we spoke to the Culture Center and its maintainers work, but a number of government offices are either in need of outfitting or in temporary housing. Um, it, was this addressed in the meeting, these meetings this week, and what measures have been taken? Yes, it has been spoken of, and um, one of my colleague ministers is very passionate. Um, Mr. Buffon, you know, that, that's about the last discussion we had a few minutes before you came in, was, was on, on, on maintenance. Um, we're very concerned that there is um, this 
maintenance problem. And, and what we think we need is what we need is a, a one-off a one -off package to do the repairs and then introduce um, regular maintenance. Unless we do that, we're going to be in trouble. Yes, there's some discussions. I think, if I'm not mistaken, last year um, a, um, a consultancy was, take, was undertaken to look at the buildings and, and, and the costings and that kind of thing. I haven't seen that as yet, but I think that is there. And uh, we'll be having more discussions on that because clearly, um, if we don't do a preventative uh, maintenance, then we're going to be in trouble. So we have to start looking at preventative uh, maintenance. How about the housing situation for some of the ministries that are in temporary housing as, as we speak? And Governor, you can, all, you can also chip in. Well, um, I have discussed briefly with um, the FID and, and, and Adam, sorry, Adam, yes, that um, our plans for accommodation, but I don't wish to go into details at this point in time because there's nothing finalized. Mm -hmm. so I, 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 <laughs> Governor Pierce, um, you were the only you were the only one at the head table that was here at last year's um, fam, fam so, meeting. So, yeah. so this one kind of goes back to that. I remember you sharing that one of the things that you recognized was missing from uh, the discussions was a baseline of what the standards of um, Montserrat, what our expectations should be when we come to the table. Has, has there been any discussions in the last year about what this minimum standard is that so that when we do come to talk to FCU and DFID about what our needs are, we at least have a comparative measure to say what's happening in St. Helena, London, somewhere else? Um, and how do you feel about that in terms of what the discussions you had this week? Is that still a necessity, you think? Well, uh, it's a difficult one because, to be frank, to come at something as complex as life on a small island and a community here and try and set a precise standard in every area, I, I think it would be an almost impossible task. So I can't quite recall my comments, but if I if I was suggesting that, I, that may have been a, uh, a, a new boy's uh, concept. But I, I think as we work through in the FAM and other discussions, CIPREG and across the piece, actually, including some of the other programs, as this one called GRID, or Public Sector Reform. In all of those areas, in, in effect, we are trying to set an agreed standard in each piece of work. And the FAM, it, in practical terms, it has to have a baseline to work from, and the baseline is history. The baseline is how we, we've got to where we are now. And these new spends that the Premier and Adam were talking about obviously need to be looked at ab above that or in that context, including particularly this maintenance package. Um, and uh, you know you have to make your judgments uh, a, a, according to that. But in general, it really helps us to draw on a, uh, a broadly agreed standard. Otherwise, one is lost in these meetings. So every time there's a particular issue, whether it's, uh, for example, as the Premier was saying, the, the package of pensions and terminal gratuities, or if it's actually maintenance standards, then it is really helpful to us. We have to have it as some sort of broad professional guide as what is acceptable. But a complete sort of from ground zero up re rebooting of standards for Montserrat, I don't think is tenable with the re resources we have and the nature of that challenge. I don't, don't know, Adam and Premier, if you'd agree with that or you wanted to add anything on that? No, okay. Thank you. Thank you. One of the things I'm sure has been, a, a, has been an issue, it used to be an issue, our share in providing the income, the monies for our recurrent budget, just sticking to yeah. the recurrent budget. Um, how are we doing and what is DFID expecting from us? Are we expected to, because see, it matters to the public now, because yep. if we have to come up with, let's say, Whatever figure we come up with, we have to come up with 50%, 40%. The question is, how are we going to meet that? Yeah. And that could mean all kinds of things, increasing tariffs, increasing this, and so on and so on. So how have we settled that? Yeah. I, th I think it's, um, sorry. it's a good question. And um, I think my different colleagues will correct me if I'm wrong, but I think the, the UK contribution to the budget's static around 60%. Yeah. And that's more or less the same. And um, part of our discussion this week was hearing from the governor of Montserrat about all the different revenue rate, uh, streams. Um, but just to reassure you, we didn't turn up and we were like, right, you have to raise tax, you have to cut pension. That's not been part of the discussions. Mm -hmm. That's and uh, I think the key thing here is, um, as the premier has alluded to, about uh, boosting the economy, economic growth, 
and getting more tourists to the island, more businesses, and they're the things that generate income. So away from taxing the average person in the street, that's the way you have new revenue streams which are sort of adding to the public service copper. Many thanks, everybody. Um, just like to say, safe travels to our FCO and DFID colleagues.